Welcome back to Pro City Cage and this is that today I'm gonna to be giving an update on BNGO. My previous DD is in the description if you want to check it out later on. Make sure to drop a like to this video to help this channel grow and so drop a subscribe with the notifications on to get the latest out of videos. Without further ado, I'm gonna be going through technical analysis and then latest news and then how we'll be playing the stock. So first things first, you look into the one month, one day perspective. It did see a negative reversal happen on the fourth, but that was very much short lived and you get to see that it is actually uh, trying to curve up towards the positive where it might see another positive reversal from the negative trend it briefly just had. In terms of momentum, it seems that the stock is stable on momentum, very low momentum there. But when you look at the average directional index, it is sitting in at 5209. Usually that is a warning sign for you to consider selling. Uh, but I want to look more into the one hour perspective to understand that better. Now the stock uh, William percent R shows the stock where it's at a neutral level. Stock price is still above the 200 SMA, above the 50 SMA and the 10 SMA is above the 30 MA. That is all bullish. Trading action zone is below where the price is. So in case of it dips, there is a high chance for it to see a reversal. And we're seeing high increases of volumes day by day. So now we need to look into the one hour perspective. So over in the one hour perspective, you get to see an MACD that is actually curving in a little bit towards the negative and it doesn't seem that it actually is decreasing except maybe on the last hour, but that's still coming in. Uh, but it looks like it might actually still bleed a little bit towards Monday morning. Now the stock price is in a trading action zone between the 10 SMA and the 30 MA. Here we're, here it can see actually a reversal where, it's where it pulls back up. The price is under the VWAP. Now, your biggest concern is if the 10 SMA dips under the 30 EMA, that renders it bullish. Sorry, bearish. Now, the 200 SMA and the 200 and the 50 SMA are coming in a little bit down. Uh, so there's still it's still a bullish sign here. But what you're looking at is that both averages are crossing in and not in a good way. ADX here uh, seems to be a little bit around 34.65 after it has reached 50, which is usually the warning sign where a trend dies or warning sign a trend is dying. And it seems that it was very much short lived where right away pulled back from the dollar of four. The stock price is still oversold over here around the willing percent R, but the momentum seems to be a little bit around negative and going down. So we need to look into the terms of moving averages and supports and try to understand how the market sentiment is going. Now the moving average here is in the band and uh, CN with the purple in the middle. And you get to see that the middle usually would trade either half the top half or the bottom half. And you get to see that the top half is starting 0.73 and ending 0.81 and the very much bottom of the moving average is 0.66 but the price is way above that so that is quite concerning now moving on towards retracement uh, fibonacci retracements where we get to identify supports and resistances we get to see uh well first of all there is a traditional support happening in around 0.85 mark and then below that we're seeing all the way to 0.83 and then right below that a 0.81 for fibonacci retracement support and then we're seeing another one around 0.8 sorry 0.8 and then we're looking at 0.78 and 0.76 support and then we're looking at fibonacci support 0.73 following that 0.72 um, and then following that we're dropping a little down to 0.7 and then we're seeing 0.66 and then 0.63 on the fibonacci and traditional support and then right below that we're seeing in around 0.58 now comes into support uh, sorry the resistances we're seeing one at current happily run, uh, running at uh, 0.88 and then we're seeing a 0.90 and then we're seeing in around 0.91 and then 0.93 and then right above that uh, there's a bit more room to grow 0.97 and up to a dollar. Now I'm coming in towards trends and what we can see in terms of those trends. Um, let's try to identify quickly. Well, uh, the trend line basically is not broken, but it has been broken on the last trading day. So Thursday. So that's a little bit of a warning sign there. Now going on towards uh, Fibonacci arcs to try to identify if there's anything there. Uh, nothing significant to me that lays out. So now moving on towards earnings. And what we get to see is that they do have an earnings on the 13th. Uh, that's next week. So it's not far off from right now. Uh, so my expectations is that it would run uh, very much closer to next Thursday, even if it accumulates down. So you want it first to find a really good support. Test that supports and bounces back and you want to run on there. I'm going to be mentioning how I'll play it right after I go towards news. So now going on towards news and what we're seeing here is on insider tradings and whatnot. So this is first insider tradings and we get to see that there's no purchases all the way back to uh, last year, almost a year ago. Um, 
we're seeing here that there is apparently a transaction with IFP advisors, although the amount or shares is not uh, declared. UBS Group's AG here seems to be the last one to buy shares. That was around uh, a week ago, but they do have quite a bit, around $199,000. So there's still institutional interest is still there. It doesn't seem that there is a lot of sales happening, at least recently in the last two weeks. These folks have around 236 trillion dollars um and under their position so they're definitely a big fish and if they have an interest in such a company that means it has something worth it at least that's what that signals to me so uh definitely institutional interest still there one of the latest news that got it to run is the studies on covid 19 disease uh in china using their sapphire program so if you don't if you're not familiar with this one here uh, they have a really amazing product that is a really game much of a game changer for long term this company is going to be on the hill of some of, on the cusp of something really big um and so basically there has been COVID 19 news towards sapphire and that just made it a COVID play as well and it's quite interesting now going on this is a 14a uh from uh the third uh nothing significant here other than a supplement of a special meeting happening uh and that happened in i believe on august 3rd now the next one would be the quarter one and um uh, Nothing over there other than just quite a little bit of things, for instance, um, a reverse split, for instance, something that they're not seeking on. And for my understanding is that got uh, canceled for my understanding. Now, here is another one. So basically you need to approve uh, a share increase, um, a special meeting and increase. So basically my understanding is that the stock is not going to be doing uh, a reverse split, but the meeting is going to be held on August 31st, uh, this one as well on August 31st. Now, why am I saying that they probably won't do a reverse split? There is a risk there, don't get me wrong, uh, and a risk of increasing shares that might actually lead up to dilution. But this company seems to have gone quite a bit on understanding how to increase that market price. And you can get to see that where they were trading not, last, not less than a month ago, they were trading at half the value. So if they're able to play their PR really nicely, before the end of the month, they can easily make it above a dollar. And once they achieve that, then they wouldn't need a reverse split. But that really depends on their PR. And I would imagine that they don't want to do a reverse split to maintain their institution value. But companies like that really care about keep staying and running. Um, so definitely it's something in the future at the end of the month to worry about. But now going on towards the next catalyst, their uh, earnings, earning report. Earning report is happening next week on the 13th. So what I would want to do is um, I want to double check first if it does accumulate, right? If it does accumulate here and it holds in somewhere very similar to what has happened here before, that's where I want to jump in. So what I expect right now is that it does bounce back and forth between the support and the resistance, similar to what happened here. And that's a good sign because then I would be able to anticipate that there would be a run after accumulation. Right now, it's definitely a hold for me. Uh, I wouldn't give it a straight buy, but uh, it could be as well a really nice play where you can see a jump. Really depends on PR, but definitely closer towards earnings. Uh, I would definitely consider getting on this at least on Tuesday or Monday if it does dip a little or accumulates. Thank you very much. What do you think about this sticker? Make sure you mention down in the comments below. Share, subscribe, and like it. You have a wonderful day.